what's going on? Welcome to another video of Grim Dawn Ashes of Malmoth. Mordecai Mike here, finally with an update on the Death Knight. I am super excited to talk about this character. I'm happy with where he's at, so I can't wait to discuss this. It might be a little longer than usual in this video, but I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. So before I do that, I want to mention a few things. First of all, guys, if you are interested, I do have a Discord now. It's going to be all things Grim Dawn. Let me know. I'll send you a link or an invite. And it's going to be for theory crafting. It's going to be for sharing build ideas, just general discussion about Grim Dawn, hanging out with friends, uh, making friends, having people to play with, so on and so forth. I think it'll strengthen the Grim Dawn community, and I think it's a fantastic idea. So if you're interested, please let me know. Secondly, guys, I kind of had an idea for this channel. Basically, if you guys think it would be fun, let me know in the comments below. But basically, you guys would come up with a build idea or something you might just want to see in-game, a build concept, and I will basically bring it to life in-game. And then I can translate that and show you guys its strengths, its weaknesses, if it's good, if it's bad, and kind of go over what I think about the build. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. All right, so yesterday in stream, guys, I had a lot of fun. I was playing with a lot of people, talking to a lot of people. If you guys haven't come by, you should. It really is a good time. Everybody enjoys it. We talk, we laugh, have a good time, and give away items to people who might need them, share build ideas. A lot of new players come in, and people in the chat are just, everybody's so kind, everybody's so willing to share information. It's really cool. So if you're interested in that, come on by. I finally did get to play with Josh yesterday, and it was a blast. I had a lot of fun. Me and Josh actually were pretty close to the same area, and to completing the game on Ultimate on our Death Knights, so we kind of just met together, and we blasted through the end of the game. It was a lot of fun. So hopefully he'll make a video about it, and... Uh, yeah, hopefully he got some good recording. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. You guys should come by. All right. So, this Death Knight is not finalized, like I was saying. And it will change a little bit, but it is very strong. It is very strong, and I'm really enjoying it. So let's go over the skills real quick. As you can see, I have some of these abilities as one pointer, some are max. This one right here, I did put two points into this, and then with plus two to skills, puts it at four. So being, for being a four base stat ability. This is really good. This is going to give you all damage and it's also going to reduce the target's defensive ability. And that's always good. You want to reduce defensive ability. And I'll be discussing that here more in a second. Ward Cry. I put it as high as it can go with plus the skills. It's at 19. So this is really nice. Obviously reducing enemy damage is never a bad thing. One point to break morale. It's just a little bit of a skill disruption which is really nice. We have Fighting Spirit Max. Super good ability. All damage. OA. OA is super important. We always want to stack that as high as we can. Still one point to Blitz, but even for that one point, does crazy damage. Really good skill. The more important part of this is going to be the Blind Side. As you can see, Blind Side reduces defensive ability by 195. Amazing. This is really good. I would recommend probably pumping this and using this as much as possible. Some of this might change around on my end build, but for right now, this build is currently set up to kind of just clear through things and smash things pretty quick obviously for farming reasons counter-strike one point not bad for a one-pointer this is one of the biggest changes in this build cadence is going to be our heavy nuke you know heavy hitter so as you can see does a ton of damage 460 percent main hand damage i have a lot of plus skills of this and it's really good i have arcane bomb linked to that and then i have the time dilation linked to this and i'll talk about those here in a second but yeah heavy hitter i put one point here and then i maxed out deadly momentum this is really good because you're getting average physical damage out of this, and that's one of the most important things about this. Still one point in Mahir's Will. Still max out military conditioning, max out overguard, max out field command, one point in the squad tactics. It's okay right now where it's at. I might alter this later. I'm not quite sure yet. That's obviously more of an offensive ability. Mahir's Bulwark maxed, one point in Scars of Battle, one point into Decorated Soldier. That's on the soldier side. Let's go to Necromancer. Believe it or not, one point in the Reaping Strike. It's at 11 out of 10. And we have one point into Necrotic Edge. For one pointers, these are really, really hard to pass up. Obviously, for a one point, if you're getting that many pluses of skills to it, it's crazy hella worth the extra damage you're getting out of it. Same for this. Even if this was at rank one, it's still a really good amount of damage for one point. But with plus skills, it's obviously at six. Siphon Souls, 14 out of 12. So originally, this did vitality damage, and the duration was for three seconds, if you remember correctly. Okay, so what's cool about this modifier? is yes, you do lose total damage on this ability, and you do lose some of the damage converted into health, but it converts 100% of that vitality into Aether, and then it increases the, rate, the duration by six seconds. So what's really important about this, guys, is that it goes from three seconds of dot damage to nine seconds of dot damage, okay? So even though you're losing a little bit of damage, you're actually gaining a ton of damage because that duration lasts much longer, which in turn then lets you vamp for a longer period of time to everything around you that's taking damage from this. And then I have Hungering Void linked to that. 
this is really important, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. <laughs> so we have Spectral Binding Max, obviously for the huge health OA, really good, and then the bonus Aether Damage, nothing bad about this skill, it's everything that we need. Spear of the Heavens linked to this, and then we have Spectral Wrath, very important as always, drops the enemy Aether Resistance, that's super important, does some dot return. One point of Mark of Torment, don't really need to go higher. It's good as is. Let's go over Devotion. So this Devotion is finalized. This is what I'm going to be using even on my end game for farming the low car and my tank setup. You have Lizard. You have one point uh, the Red Crossroads. You have Widow. Widow is obviously important for the Arcane Bomb. Again, reducing enemy Aether resistance. Very important. Keep that in mind. We have Wraith. This is just to move on, but you do get some decent stats out of it. Going to get some bonus Aether. Some Spirit Aether Resist. OA. And then we get some Flat Aether as well as Percent Aether. And then we're getting 50% energy absorbed from enemy spells, so there's nothing wrong with that, that's pretty decent. We're going for the spear, obviously, for the return on the Aether proc on this, gives you an additional little stun. It's a pretty spammable nuke, it's really nice additional damage, so it's definitely worth using. Hourglass, guys. Okay, this thing is, in my opinion, crazy good, and I never really like considered it, because back when I used to play earlier in the stages of Grim Dawn, it was not very good, and they've buffed it since, and it is much better now. So we have Physique, Cunning, Spirit. And then we have, look at this, 25% reduction to internal trauma, burn, frost burn, electrocute, poison, vitality, bleed, and life leech. So it reduces all of those damage categories in their duration reduction. I mean, it's just, like, that's a lot of damage mitigation, really, if you sit and think about it. Um, some more resistance to slow resist. 25% reflected damage reduction. So this is really important, actually. So anything that you hit that does return damage to you from your damage source can be pretty deadly, but this reduces the damage that it does by 25%, which is really nice. Some resistances, max resist, never a bad thing. That will be more important later when I go to farm Lokar, and I'll talk about that in a later video. Defensive ability, chance to avoid melee and projectiles, and then this is one of the most important things about this setup. This is going to be a must, most likely, if you're fighting really hard in-game bosses like Lokar. The time dilation, this will allow you to spam your skills more often. This is eventually going to translate into you being able to keep up your overguard constantly and being able to siphon souls constantly and keeping the lifesteal and everything going more fluid. That's why this is really important. As well as that you spam, you know, like blitz more often, things like that, lets you get more damage in. So technically this is a DPS increase overall. Took Vulture just to move on in the tree, nothing important really there. Took Chariot, obviously you get a lot of OA, and then the final proc gives you healing and DA, kind of helps counter this. Now this is where this build gets crazy and wonky, and I know this seems like this is stupid, right? At first glance, you think, why the hell would you go Dying God? You're stacking Vitality and Chaos damage if you go this route, right? Alright, so what's important about this is, first of all, you get a lot of OA. You get 3% offensive ability just in general, and then a lot of OA boosts flat, get some resistances, do get some defensive ability. But the most important thing about this, guys, is the Hungering Void. And the reason why that is so important is because even though you're not really getting all those damage stats per se, and it's not really a huge boost, I mean, you do vitality damage, so it's not entirely useless. But the most important thing about this is the crit damage on this, guys. The crit damage on this makes you smack things for so so hard like you just you nuke things so hard and i'll show you that here in a second that's why this is going to be very important so even though we are running a tank setup we get a we get away with a lot of dps potential because of this skill alone so and you get total speed nothing wrong with total speed like i mentioned before total speed is movement speed cast speed attack speed everything it boosts everything and then we have a chance to terrify enemies on hit nothing super important but it does proc yeah, so then we have Sailor. Yeah, just make sure I got everything. Eel. Blizzard. Alright, Blizzard's pretty good because it helps ruin everything. Alright. So let's go over items real quick. So this setup I'm currently using is more of a DPS setup, and that's just for smashing through things and clearing through the game a little faster. Uh, farming, things like that. But there are certain things that will not change. This, for example, will not change. This is going to be something that you will be using in the final build. The Mythical Mind Warp, and it is too good to not use. As you can see, Flat Aether. On top of that, crit damage. Obviously stacking with Hungering Void, super important. You have Percent Aether, you have 20% chance to reduce the resistances by a percentage, 20% chance to reduce the resistances by a flat amount. These stats can actually change based on the item you find, the rolls can be different, so keep an eye out for additionals of these that you might find. Physical damage converted to Aether, very important, you want that on a lot of your gear. OA, very important, attack speed, cast speed, never bad, cooldown, 2 to Cadence, 3 to Spectral Binding. Everything that we need in this build is beautiful. Even if you plan on going Battle Mage, which is Soldier Arcanist, it's going to be very important to have this item. 
And again, if you go Soldier Arcanus, you're getting even more use out of this, which is pretty nice, because you get plus one skills Arcanus, right? So it's very important. You won't get the Spectral Binding, but hey, really useful still. All right, Mind Warp. So this is really nice, 100% chance on attack. There is no internal cooldown on this, so it's up always. More Flat Aether, more Percent Aether, more Physical Converted Aether, and then 25 OA. You can see the component I have, Flat Aether, Percent Aether, 3% OA, more Physical Converted Aether, see where we're going here. It's a lot of damage conversion, a lot of offense ability, really nice. And then you get Aether Corruption buff, it's a skill that you can use, which is really nice. So that on enemies, it spreads like a dot, and it gives you flat Aether resist or percent Aether resistance on enemies. It spreads like Bloody Pox, kind of really good. And then I'm using Impi Powder for flat Aether, percent increase Aether, a little bonus vitality, but nothing bad there. You can switch it out, you can do whatever you want, but this is just what I'm using currently. Mythical Devil Cage Hauberk. This is a really good item for now, I'm not regretting using this at all it's just really really strong so flat physical like i said very important percent physical chaos don't really get anything out of that internal trauma that is good we do get damage out of that health defensibility physical resistance is always good but it's never a bad stat so you stack it where you can in fact my defensive shield with this setup actually has 21 physical resistance on it so i get a lot out of that um, 120 fire, so you'll never need to put fire resistance on anything. <laughs> it covers that entirely. 2 to war cry, which is really good. Nothing wrong with that. And we have Devil's Cage, so this has a 100% chance when hit to proc. It does have a little bit of a cooldown, but it's up pretty often. So you can see it drops enemy defensive ability and does some bonus physical damage when it procs. Really nice. Chains of Oleron for the extra OA and damage uh, for the farming potential, and then we have some poison resists on that. Mythical Dread Knight Slate Plates, same concept. Physical, a little bit of Vite, health. Chance to avoid melee attacks, so it actually stacks with Hourglass, which is pretty nice. 2 to Reaving Strike, 2 to Reaving Strike, 2 to Overguard. You can see a lot of plus skills, why not? It's really good. Wave of Souls, so a 20% chance on block to do a little Vitality damage and then get the damage converted to health on that, so it's not bad at all. Again, some more Poison Resist because we need it. Alright, I did manage to finally craft this. I had the skill or the resources to do it, I just was lazy and didn't do it. But this is really strong. It helps you do a lot of extra damage. 3% attack damage converted to health is really important on this. Nothing wrong with that at all. Get some, you know, obviously attack speed, cast speed, bonus damage, one skills, and necromancer. And then you get Reaping Arc. So this is like a frontal conal attack. And it does a crazy nuke. And it's really good. And then you get one, I got one to Reaping Strike, one to Necrotic Edge. So I kind of got lucky on those rolls there. Pretty good item. Using Mythical Reforged Chains of Alderaan. Again, flat physical, crit damage. So nice. I'm probably over like 50% crit damage, somewhere around there. Bonus crit damage. It's kind of crazy. I'll show you here in a second. It's nuts. It's nuts. All right. So we get, you know, obviously one skill to soldier, some more resist. This thing is actually really good. Mythical Mark of Dreadblade. Now, like I said, I do have like defensive relics. I do have defensive belts, you know, gloves. I do have stuff that's more defensive, but right now I'm using things that makes me smack things really hard because I'm trying to farm the rest of the creeks. <laughs> but you get flat aether, physical, aether percent, total speed again. So that stacks with Hungry Void. Fire, Vitality, Max Fire Resist, 3 to Reaping Strike, 2 to Cadence, Dreadblade. So 10% chance on attack to proc Dreadblade. This is going to hit enemies, it's going to do an extra nuke on, on hit whenever it procs, and then it's going to petrify targets for 2 seconds. It's actually really crazy how often this procs, and it's really good. It's like a disrupt or an interrupt. It just stuns them, they just like turn to stone and lock in place and I can just keep hitting them. It's kind of ridiculous. <clears throat> and then I'm using Wardstone there for the extra bleed and elemental resistance. Alright, so I'm using the Krieg's Boots right now. Obviously everything that we need, need, get a lot of bonus physical aether, and this is going to uh, obviously be stronger once I get the rest of it. Using the Mythical Colossal Grasp. So this is actually pretty good. So we're getting health regeneration, increased percent health regeneration, and that's really good for this build. It actually synergizes with this build. Getting bonus physical physique. Physique is not bad. That gives us overall uh, health, health regen, defensive ability, a lot of good stats. And then uh, physical resist, which is nice. Decorated soldier. And then look at this: 100%, 150% physical damage to overguard, and 150% internal trauma damage to overguard. So whenever I activate overguard, which is a defensive ability, it gives me more damage. <laughs> so it's actually kind of nuts. And then colossal might. This is mastery. Mastery of a shield combat has honed you into a lethal and unstoppable weapon. This is a shield passive bonus. So you have a 15% chance of bonus physical damage, percent physical, internal trauma, and attack speed. So again, more damage, even though it's tanky and defensive, you're getting a lot of damage out of it. Creek Shoulders, um, I do have an Unholy Inscription in there, and that is for the OA and Resistances, by the way. Creek Shoulders, you can see everything that we need, again, like I said before. And then I have Living Armor in this, so that's OA, Armor Absorption, Chaos, Elemental Resist. And then we're using Mythical Will of the Living, right? So that's everything, I think. Well, okay, so we have the rings, my bad. So we have rings. This is pretty important. This gives you the life still that's required to sustain a lot better. And on top of this, it's quite a bit. It's really nice. 
and we're getting decent resist out of that, bonus of skills, chance on attack to steal life. It's really nice. And then I'm still using Mythical Signet of the Falling. So, you know, this needs to be replaced, but I'm mostly using this for the Chaos Resist. This is one of the most important things on this item right now. This helmet, I actually got really lucky. I got super lucky with this drop. For a green helm, it's insanely good. Two to Warcry and two second skill recharge, or minus two second skill recharge to Warcry, so my Warcry is up more often. Stacked, you know, with the Hourglass and everything. Really nice. Anyway, get a lot of decent stats out of this. Pierce, Vitality Resist is really nice. We get Cunning, which actually boosts offensive ability, and then we do have offensive ability on it. And then the Amulet is a Stone Guard Ward, Physical Internal Trauma, Cunning, Defense Ability, Attack Speed, Pierce, Chaos, Elemental, Max Pierce, Max Chaos Resist, and a little bit of Retaliation. And then we have Stone Ward, 20% chance when hit to gain 350 damage absorption. That's crazy, crazy good. All right. So that's all the items. All right, guys, let's get into some gameplay. Sorry, that was pretty long, I know. <clears throat> but let's go kick some ass. We're going to return to Port Valberry. Alright guys, that's going to conclude the video. A um, few things I want to point out real quick. 
as you can see, my highest crit ever dealt is 396,499 with the setup. And this is with a very tanky defensive setup. That is a crazy amount of damage. I can only imagine it's going to get better as I finish out the Kriegs. And as always, on top of that, my bad, it's on this page here. Still at zero deaths, guys. So my goal so far has been achieved, and I'm pretty excited about that. But there it is, guys. Very powerful build. Very, very strong. And it's doing everything that I expected it to do. And I can't wait to start doing some low car and some other hard bosses, some Nemesis bosses. I got a farm to unlock those, but as soon as I do, I will let everybody know. What's this guy doing? What's he up to? Hey, buddy. <laughs> let me know what you think about the ideas I mentioned earlier, guys. And if you haven't, please subscribe. If you liked, please like. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.